Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the Indian financial system. This video is important from the point of view of a beginner in banking, whether it is a probationary officer or in a clerical or the people interested in banking or general commerce and uh, especially from the point of view of the IIBF examinations if you are taking those exams. We are going to get started with this concept called the components of an economy. So let us see what exactly are the components of an economy. We will start with the first component, the players. In this economy are one, the individual, two, the households, three, the industries. The fourth one, uh, which I am referring to as players here in this video, is the wealth, because ultimately uh, in economy, money is one component that exchanges hands. There are probably a couple of quotes uh, about money exchanging hands and literature as well, but uh, I think we would rather stick to the economic side of things only right now. Let us try and understand the interactions that take place between these entities that we discussed right now, that we talked of right now. So there are the households and then there are the firms or industries. One of the very basic transactions that take place between households and industries is that households supply manpower to industries. We get up from our places every morning and go to respective places of work, whether they be firms, industries, uh, offices, schools, whatever. So what? why do we do that? To earn money, right? So that is this reciprocating interaction between firms and households. That is, they get back money for the labor that they provide to firms. Actually, there is another interaction now that I'm thinking about it that happens between firms and households. That is when firms produce goods and put them out in the market and households buy those goods. That is the time when the exchange of goods takes place, finished goods takes place from firms to households and money takes place from households to firms. However, in this video, we're going to confine us to this transaction and let us see what happens next okay so when households get cash you know everybody saves for the rainy day i mean a lot of us do right proactively what happens is that this money that we get paid we use some of it we keep some of it and that some of it accumulates as wealth with households now what is the primary thing that people do with the wealth accumulated First of all, money is not safe and money physically kept at home does not give us any return. So in the economy, there exists an entity called the bank. The bank is an entity where people tend to go and deposit their money because for it, they get a return. That The return in the form of, rate, uh, of interest, right? So people prefer to go and deposit their money to banks. Thus, what happens is that people go and give their money to banks and in a simultaneous interaction, when firms are trying to expand, they need more cash, more cash than what they currently have or what is coming in the form of profits of selling the goods. That is when for excess cash needs, they go to a bank and banks provide them a loan. This is basically how banks function as a business. They take money from depositors, which is a liability to the banks, and then they give that money to other lenders, which is an asset to the bank. And generally the difference of rate of interest, that is the, difference, the rate of interest at which money has been lent, minus the, the interest earnings at which the money was borrowed from the people, who deposited it in their saving accounts. 
that is the income of a bank that is how a bank or institutions financial institutions function this is one way now you can see that in this diagram money has been flown money has been shown to flow in all three directions in a cyclical fashion this is how banks operate and this in fact is the downsized version of the very first economics model a primary model there are uh, other elements to which which add more detail and depth but we will gradually evolve to it now coming back to the indian financial system there are three regulatory bodies in the financial system one is the reserve bank of india two is the securities and exchange board of india this is the indian equivalent of the american sec securities and exchange commission and then we have the irda that is the insurance regulatory and development authority let us try and see the function that these three bodies have in our country the reserve bank of india looks after the banking business and the money markets it has a lot of authority in the in these domains i'd rather say and other domains related to finances in the country while the securities and exchange board of india that is sebi looks after the capital markets these are uh, primarily the stock markets where the exchange of equity and trading takes place we'll get into that in about this in other videos as we come to it and the irda looks after the insurance business as the name suggested now we are going to uh, observe the main functions of reserve bank of india like we said that reserve bank of india looks after banking business and money markets so some of its functions are that it is the issuer of currency in india the onus or responsibility of issuing currency lies with the reserve bank of india what amount what denomination the features of notes the security features everything is determined by the reserve bank this as you will see that is the issuing of currency part this in fact is uh, the one common function that you will observe in all the fiscal banks uh, throughout the world they are, that they are responsible for the issuing of currency next is monetary policy monetary policy basically decides the exchange of uh, money the money aggregates in the country monetary policy uh, rbi governs through different tools through which it determines that uh, the the availability of money inside a system inside an economy is evenly distributed if there if there are some bottlenecks if there is some accumulation of money it should be evened out if necessary uh, it it does this through some certain tools like uh, the cash reserve ratio the statutory liquidity ratio a marginal standing facility just hear these words these terms and we will come to them in another video so these using these tools the the monetary policy is decided and the monetary policy is basically the national policy to control the flow of money as a whole in the system next is that it is the regulator and supervisor of the indian financial system RBI undertakes the regulatory functions of all the financial bodies whether they are banking companies or non-banking financial companies which are more commonly uh, known by their short form NBFCs so uh, RBI has taken the role of a regulator here it it supervises these companies it conducts their audits 
and uh, takes over the matters, observes as a regulator, it has that authority. And now, in fact, the late, with the latest passing of the bill, uh, you must have heard that RBI has been uh, granted the authority to supersede the boards of certain banks. That is, again, that function would fall under the uh, role of a regulator and supervisor. Oh, yes. It is certainly the lender of last resort to banks. See, banks undergo a lot of financial transactions in, in call markets, in money markets, uh, again, words which we'll come to later. So what I mean to say is that banks are not only taking money from other the, the public as a borrower and to the other companies and other people as lender. Bank also exchanges money with other banks, financial institutions. Banks are listed on stock markets. So there are times when banks run short of money. And since RBI has the role of being the regulator and supervisor, uh, there are of course safety limits provided. However, if such such a thing happens, then RBI is the body which lends money to banks as, as a matter of last resort. This can also be seen that RBI undertakes the supervision to such a level that if some bank whose financials are low, whose balance sheet is not strong enough, that RBI probably thinks that this bank would not survive. So that is when uh, the Reserve Bank of India suggests mergers and acquisitions because you know ultimately a bank failing would probably lead to some sort of economic anarchy and that is what a regulator should never let happen. This is why the RBI is also the lender of last resort to banks. Now this next slide says that we should study the functions of Security and Exchange Board of India. Now this board was uh, was created by the government of India to overlook the capital markets. Now capital markets is this entire domain that encompasses stock exchanges, the interactions happening in the market where equity floats. The investment banks, brokers, IPOs. IPOs are initial public offerings. That is when a firm, a company handled by the select few people, its owners, tries to sell their equity, the company's shares in public. And the initial offering made to the public, the very first time it goes public, is called an IPO. Then there are dealers. Uh, who do these kind of transactions between different uh, financial bodies in the capital market. Then there are mutual funds. Mutual funds, you've, you've heard a lot about them on advertisements on TV, perhaps, I'm guessing. And of course, the bankers who are already there know what mutual funds are. And asset management companies. Asset management companies are the companies that manage the underlying assets of the various financial transactions taking place in the form of equity. Uh, most of the times, asset management companies are the companies that handle the assets of a mutual fund. So SEBI is the overall body looking after these entities and, and all the other entities that exist in capital markets. The powers and authority of SEBI, we will come to that in, in videos to follow. So till then, uh, it's thanks from Project Drona. Uh, thank you from me. And please leave a comment under the comment section so that we know what needs to be added. How can we improve on this entire experience? Till then, thanks a lot.